Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's Tila here with ChildrenOfTheSerpent.org, and welcome to another video. Today we'll be talking about the different variations of spirits, entities, thought forms, and our own manifestation of our own mind in the sense of the types of energies that we create. And this will be based off what I recently went to an event that kind of bothered me just because they're continuing pushing the negative connotation of demons such as the Christians do, but it's within the pagan community. So I'm kind of just going into this just to hope that this builds more of an understanding of the differences and understanding that demons are not the source of evil either. Um, if you do end up liking this video, make sure to hit the like button and hit subscribe. And make sure to check out our website and sign up as a member. This is probably the best chance to sign up because we will be working on getting our own social networking app as we are in the works of raising the money for that. And then the website will just be acting like as our Facebook group does. So it's a great time to get involved. And we have different forums um, that you can talk about, different discussions such as the cult, witchcraft, sex magic, or things that are just for fun. And it doesn't have the ridiculous Facebook rules or Facebook boundaries. We just ask for mutual respect. It is dominantly a theistic group, so keep that in mind if you do sign up. Um, and then let's just go ahead and get into and go in deep, I guess. <laughs> So the first thing we should get into is kind of understanding is human spirits. A lot of us that go into the occult have actually seen the spirits. It kind of is what initially attracts us to it because we see something we don't understand. Some of us as children are told, hey, this isn't real, and it kind of closes off the chakras in our mind into not seeing them no longer. However, that gift still resides in us. And that can bring up later on life and say, hey, what was the purpose of this? Was this real? Or it's still continuing to happen within you despite people's efforts of telling you it is not real. And this is kind of, human spirits are, a lot of times in my, now this is opinion, is because I believe as we are a consciousness. And if we are a consciousness, most of us, we join into one continuous consciousness. I'm not trying to sound like a hippie or not, but most of us don't have a strong enough mind in a way of speaking to be individualistic, to be standalone and become an immortal consciousness. Thus you join into this continuous, so it's like this flow of energy. Now the human spirits we might actually see are individual consciousness. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that they are extremely hateful or angry, and this is what this keeps them strong and keeps them separate and individualistic. That's not necessarily true. Some of them could have been spiritualists in their real life and they choose to stand on their own in a way of becoming an immortal consciousness. So now they can manifest into what we see as spirits. Now it's usually not like the way you see me right now or I see you. It's usually a coloration. The way I saw spirits Again, this is my perception and what I've seen in my own experiences is I've seen them with colors. Like I saw tr brown children spirits. Um, I've seen shadow spirits. Shadow spirits usually are considered the weaker form of spirits as they can't manifest into a different color. And that's the easiest one to obtain. So it is said at least. Um, I've seen the taller type of spirits, but it's always been like a coloration. It's like the way we see aura colors, but and it kind of shapes. So, and I don't know if I can really tell the difference between a male and a female by the coloration by itself, because it shapes like, just like a spirit. It's like it's not, it doesn't belong to a gender. So, and the reason is that we're all masculine and feminine energy at the end of the day too. So that also can play into it. Um, and the stronger ones probably do manifest stronger into an actual thing that we can physically understand. Like the demons will come to us and we'll see an actual female and an actual male and see more characteristics as they are a stronger consciousness of energy. Um, so the spirits are very, you, there's definitely a difference in the spirits don't necessarily, they may hang around and may want to get energy from you. And this is where you kind of get between the vague point of spirits and thought forms. So the spirit sometimes will try 
to make noise, try to get some activity, because they want to raise that, raise that energy within you, because they can feed on it, and it can actually help strengthen them. And this goes for thought forms as well. The difference from thought forms and a spirit is a thought form is a bit nastier a lot of times. So a thought form is created from a person's mind. For So let's say I have a lot of negative thoughts in one day, and I'm just directing all this energy out, not maybe not intentionally, but it's getting pushed out and it creates into this type of entity in a way you can say, and it creates a thought form and for it to survive, for it to even exist, it must feed on your energy. So it's gonna continue these negative thoughts. It's gonna continue telling you these depressing things or these things that you should go kill yourself and stuff like that because it's a negative thought form. Now there are positive thought forms, but they still feed off the energy. So whatever it's designed to create in the intent, is how it's going to act and believe it or not they come very universal so one of the ones I thought um, saw growing up as a child is because I lived in a violent abusive home um, with my mother and I attracted what is known as I think they call him the top hat man but he wears like one of those old-fashioned type of hats um, a black cloak well maybe not cloak but like what it was called, those long type of jacket types of things, <laughs> and he just hangs around in the corner. Um, people actually report this incident for like probably a century at least by now, and it's been spotted all over the world describing this same type of thought form. Now this thought form has been created from the negativity, the hatred, from the abuse, from the victims, and it comes in and it feeds off that energy because it's so strong. And when you live in a home like this, it is nothing but con continuous intensity. So, it makes sense for it to keep manifesting, and then it just travels along wherever it is. And it probably can be in more than one place at a time, or at least this is what I believe, as it is creating its own consciousness in a way. Because it may have never been part of the human world, but it came out of the human's mind. So in a way, it came part of multiple consciousness, um, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know, I might just be blabbing on nonsense here. But, <laughs> uh, and then the next thing is a poltergeist. So again, we're trying to separate. So we got our normal spirits that aren't like extreme. We got our thought forms that are created out of intent. And the poltergeist are your spirits who could have had a very violent death, who could have never accepted their death, that lived a very hateful life or a very emotional life. Um, and it can cause them to turn into a poltergeist as they... In a way, they kind of created their own hell, their own guilt, and they like to relive it through. So if you go into a home where a spirit might have lived and you're interrupting what they, interrupting kind of what they think is still their life, what belongs to them, they can get a bit nasty. You usually can tell when a poltergeist is around you because it's really cold. Um, human spirits when around you, it doesn't necessarily drop the temperature in a room, but a poltergeist will. Um, I had a, the only time I've ever had to deal with a poltergeist uh, it was after I performed a ritual and I accidentally forgot to cleanse one of my crystals. And then crystals have a way of reflecting negative energy back out. And it doesn't always do it in the best timing either. And that actually created a poltergeist. It only lasts six I can do a banishing ritual. It's super easy to get rid of. Um, but it came into my dream and it's like, I'm going to kill you kind of ordeal. So, and they're, they're really easy to spot because they do enter your dreams. It's not going to... It's not going to manifest like a demon. What in dream like a demon, you'll actually see this demon, this said demon that you expect to see. A poltergeist, you don't really see anything. It's just like this hateful, usually hateful, nasty energy coming around you and attacking you. Um, so, and a thought form, to kind of separate from a thought form, is a thought form is not going to necessarily be cold feeling either. That is just from the poltergeist. Like a poltergeist is like the chilling death feeling, like I said. Um, it could be from a traumatic death, and that could also be the result of that reason. However, there's a lot when it comes to the other side I don't fully understand. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is demons. Now, I went to this event recently, and they were pushing this negative connotation and why demons feed off your thoughts, feed off your energy, and... They cause you and tell you a suicide because they don't, they're not using the technical terms. They're not saying, hey, this is a thought form. Hey, this could be poltergeist or hey, this could be of your own mind. No, they're calling them drug demons. So there's people that have drug addictions. 
we had a lady come in and she claimed she can see these so-called drug demons and that she fights with them. So a good chance, which actually bothers me, is that she probably has a chance of having mental illness and possible schizophrenia. And a lot of people that go into drug addiction, a lot of them aren't getting diagnosed properly with their medication or not going to get the right help and they end up self-medicating. So that could definitely be a possibility of what's going on with her. But when I went around her, I didn't feel I didn't feel this so composed entity around her. Neither neither did the girl that came with me. We felt like a gray kind of cloudy aura, but that's because she's doing drugs and is attracting negativity in life by her own thoughts. And they were just calling them drug demons, but really, they're a thought form. It's a thought form, or it's a manifestation of her own mind. Uh, to continue, though, is why, why demons are not the energy suckers whatsoever. So, a demon can trace back to the Greeks is where the term comes from. And for them, it's an actually positive connotation. It could mean guardian spirit. Um, it could have gave you advice. It could help you with like your magical workings, but most demons, if you research such as Lilith or Ashtaroth or Belzebub, they actually originate far, much farther before the Hebrew writings or the Abrahamic religions, but they were actually ancient gods or goddesses that were worshipped and loved and had practices and devotions to them. So it's not that demon is this evil little devil, but a demon is an ancient god that you work with. And then when we work with the demon aspect of the ancient gods, we're working with the darker aspect, yes, but not an evil, but a way to teach us what they have to offer as, as the best way I can explain it, let's say we have Lilith. Lilith is also connected to Hecate. Now, whether or not that's true, I'm not sure. I'm not here to confirm or deny anything. But if they are, if we're saying they are one deity, one entity, then there are different aspects. They have different lessons to teach you within different aspects of their energy, of their consciousness. And demons are far more powerful than any spirit or th thought form because they've existed for thousands and thousands of years. And they've always been with us. They don't need our energy. They don't invoke themselves necessarily into people's lives. Unless you belong to be part of the path. Usually you're not going to see that. They have nothing to do with people that aren't willing to learn and understand. They will just disregard you totally. Because you're kind of a lower level thing. There's a lot of people think just because we're humans and keys or soul men and all that. Teaches how to control demons. We can't control these ancient deities. They're here to guide and teach us. For some, we devote our lives to them. We worship them. Some just consult in them as friends or guardian spirits. However, they do not need to suck your energy. If you want to make a mutual beneficial relationship and offer your energy, that is fine. But you can make other types of offerings as well. Um, now to talk about the final thing is what is created within our own mind. So going back to the term drug demons, again... It bothers me, but whatever. There's a good chance when you go into a path of drug addiction or alcoholism or something that is bringing you down and harming yourself and harming others, you need to take time and reflect on yourself. You need to take self-responsibility. You shouldn't be blaming devil or God or anyone but yourself. You need to reflect at that point. So a lot of those things that you're manifesting out from doing these addictions is you lot, most likely is coming right out of your own mind, your own perception, what you've created, your own reality. Um, I'm trying to think, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, if that makes any sense, you just, the human mind's a very powerful thing. And it's very easy for us to hallucinate, believe it or not. And I hate to say that, but it's true. If you want to validate something, like if you're working with a demon or spirit, you can validate the information they give to you. Or you see or have something that comes true from your working. So you're like, hey, I did this. This is the result of it. Yes, and then those connect. But when there's something where you're just constantly seeing or hearing something that might not actually be there, but you, manifestation of your mind, you should seek help. In this case, this lady should have sought, sought actual proper help, is what I personally feel. Um, they did do a cord cutting. Now, that might help. Um, I don't know, because cord cutting is like, 
apparently rushing shadow work. And I don't believe rushing anything. I don't believe in rushing the Kundalini work. Um, because it comes dangerous. If you just do something quick and easy, your results are going to be quick. But they're also going to have a very, very hard fall as well. So, just my thoughts. I don't think that's a good idea either. She should do shadow work. Um, work on herself. Work on talking to a psychologist. And then maybe talking about um, taking on to a pagan path if she so desires. However, blaming it on demons or blaming it on the devil is not going to help her with her drug addiction. And they are not demons at the end of the day. They're just her own mind tricking her or thought forms. Which there's definitely a possibility of a thought form as thought forms are attracted to those kind of environments. So if she's really living a negative lifestyle or living a very rough place, like in a rough place, then she could definitely be attracting a thought form. Um, or even a poltergeist. It's unlikely she's got a poltergeist, so it's probably a thought form. But yeah, that's my video. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, just let me know. Comment below. Add your add your thoughts. I don't know. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. Y'all have a wonderful night. Beautiful, beautiful nightmares. Darkest blessings. Hell, Satan. Hell, Lilith.